तव कथात तप्त जीवन कविभिरीत कलमशापम श्रवणमंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणती भुरीदना भुवि गृणती भुरीदना <clears throat> the path of bhakti divine love breaking all the bonds that binds the jiva getting rid of all the sufferings forever by loving god transcending the entire nature and going beyond to eternal peace bliss love absolute a wonderful state of existence a wonderful path of joyous journey doing all the duties of life in silence the inner silence is maintained amidst the external rushing activity inner peace is maintained in the war field of the life inner bliss is experienced amidst the constantly changing flux of the world just by love of god and every bit of one's existence at all levels of one's being is offered to the divine i am here in this world as yours because you have kept me you are well be done that is how a devotee feels and sees experiences that oneness with god and each we saw the acquisition and the inner conquest holding on to the god holding on to the inner anchor which is fixed in the lord's feet he moves about to the world doing sadhana silently and secretly for an onlooker he is doing all the duties with full diligence and dedication there is no external display the whole thing is internalized and does has no clash with the external similarly in the one by one conquest is taking place in the obstructions for the knowledge obstruction for meeting god are being removed and each removal is being seen as expansion of divine and the attainment is being offered at the feet of god it's what we have been seeing from amaya manankara maraga mamudam tada amoka madam mancha advesh akshobha bhav tada अमात्सर्य मलोभंच दशपुष्पम विदुर्विदा अहिंसा परम पुष्पम बिकेम अप टू दैट वी सो दीप अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ व्हाट इज अहिंसा एंड दिस तत्व हैज बीन टोटली टेकन एज द मेन साधना इन जैनिज्म अहिंसा हैज द टोटल टू द एक्सटेंट last they give up their body so that other jivas are not affected by their living life in bhagavata shri krishna says 
Jeevo Jeevasya Jeevana. For a life to exist on this earth, we have to destroy other lives, knowingly or unknowingly. Millions of bacteria and viruses and unseen small microorganisms, each breath destroys so many. So they tie a cloth in the over the mouth and nose so that these are saved, that life may not go. And just for eating, even food, suppose rice, each rice was a paddy and paddy is a seed. Yes, from the seed, a plant would have come and lived so beautifully. I am eating that as my food and all these rice grains have sacrificed their life for my living. Whatever I do uh, and plowing, I may grow vegetables, plowing, pesticide, for maintaining uh, my garden, so many ways I will be constantly killing or destroying the early insects and other lives. I may carefully mow about without see, trying to see that I am not stamping over any insect. Still, living itself is a source of death for other lives. So, ultimately, the Jain this one saints, they stop all taking food and offer their body as an oblation into the nature for the others to survive. On the other side we see exactly opposite way in the science. We are trying to destroy all things, all that come and as obstruction to us, every house has now they hit insects, ants and all. Here now I am in US, I am seeing every bit is sterilized, every bit is uh, seen. I am clean and nice but the life except human beings, very difficult to see any animals or even except pets at home, you will not see anything outside. Even birds scarcely we see. Because they don't get insects to eat and live upon. They have to live upon a few fruits here and there and stretch their life course. So plenty of birds over the trees flying about we can't see. They don't get their food properly. In a forest, so many insects, every moment are being produced. Each is dependent on others. And birds, so many animals, so many varieties of things. But here, nothing. Everything is neat and clean. Every road is swept and kept as if we can sleep over. But exactly opposite. Every moment for our living, we have to destroy, keep on destroying the other lives. I have to live a healthy life, so I kill others. They, others have to live and I kill myself. Two extremes, you see. Um, one Jainism and modern science. Hinduism Indian way of thinking from ancient time is grow in science in, this, in such a way that science do not harm nature. Don't go against nature and live a life in tune with nature, love nature, protect nature for future generations and future lives to continue on this earth. So, Ahimsa should be to the extent there is no harm for Dharma, the living beings. Every life 
has its own value in the nature, its own participation in nature, its own giving to the nature. So, uh, how to protect this nature? And minimum yeah, himsa is inevitable, but don't pluck the plant, pluck the leaves and fruits and leave the at least the plant to grow in its own way. Something like that. Hmm. Grow, but see that himsa is not there. Hmm. Gandhiji we saw destruction of himsa itself is ahimsa. Hmm. If you have a dagger in the hand, go and put it in his chest. He is making himsa. So and put an end to the himsa. The himsa, ahimsa is very difficult to understand. How do we know the war is there? Uh, you see the standpoint of Indian mentality at all times, how they are trying to build up the hmm, how we pardon others' mistakes, how this is the ancient culture. We have to protect that culture of pardoning the others' mistakes and building up unity. In spite of everybody makes error, we too make an error. And each time somebody does error, hmm, though many times we deserve punishment to the extent the life may be taken away but there is an option how you observe the incident suppose a person uh, kills someone out of maybe out of anger or maybe out of need for one's own protection now, it is very difficult to judge what was the exact cause and intention. But however, whatever it is, how do I take decision with my brain or with my heart? There are two options. One is law, another is consideration. So, when we use the brain, the brain says he has done a mistake, he needs a punishment. When the heart says, oh, everyone does mistake, can we transform him? Uh, does my excusing transform his life and if he becomes good and serves the society instead of being, he is being killed, if we can utilize him to tra get transformed and go against his own nature, conquer his nature, because when we see a person with bad tendencies, if he dies, the bad tendencies will not end with that. It will get continued in the next life. So, you, you may destroy the body in which, through which we have, he has made the mistake, but you cannot destroy the vasanas in that being. By pardoning a person, if we can get, you can transform a person and remove the defects in him instead of getting rid of that person, then you have done a great service to the society. And he, any number of lives he takes, if he becomes good, he will be serving the society serving the nation, serving the humanity, serving the nature and building up. So, Ahimsa, you have to be very careful in exercising and how much responsibility you can take to transform a person. How it is very difficult. We even to transform our own nature, it is difficult. But to the extent that guilt do not form in our heart, and we do not move away from the divine, it is that much of ahimsa we have to cultivate. 
by words we hurt others, himsa is taking place. Hmm. There is a way how to present a thing to others when he does a mistake so that he gets corrected, he gets transformed, but he doesn't feel hurt. So everywhere I have to exercise. And how do I do? A little of um, our awareness, little of awareness of divine and reality and passing events. The Viveka, Viveka will help you to decide about Himsa and Ahimsa. And till now, little by little you are raised to the extent of manifesting this divinity. By the time you come to the Ahimsa, though Ahimsa is the first step in the Sadhana, according to Patanjali Yoga Sutra, uh, before that he would have reached Guru. After Guru's instruction alone, we start the Guru is a manifestation of divinity. There we see what Guru would have taken a step in case the situation has come in his life. What Guru Mata would have taken a step. A similar incident is the best way. In our lives also, after we leave our home and heart and become sannyasis in the modern mission, the elders tell us any situation, always think before you take a step. If Thakur were to be there, Sri Ramakrishna used to be there in the same situation, or Holy Mother used to be there in the same situation, or Swami Vivekananda used to be there in the same situation, what steps they would have taken, what decision they would have taken, that would be the best decision. So, Ahimsa Paramam Pushma, which is supreme flower, so many flowers we are collecting, the supreme flower, Paramam Pushpa, Pushpa Vindri Anikraha. This Pushpa, Ahimsa Pushpa, when you are doing, you will give. What does it happen? It raises a little more divinity manifestation. And what is the result? You, When the Ahimsa tendency goes away, only love flows. You endear every jiva on this earth. Slowly you go beyond the Himsa and Ahimsa to a state where love alone manifests. You don't distinguish between good and bad, right and wrong. You'll be divine. Divine is beyond all differences and all dualities in which all dualities merge. So, this is what we see. Ahimsa, Paramam, Pushpam. Pushpa Indri, Anikraha. Pushpa Indriya Nikraha, Indriya Nikraha, Indriyas are always uh, the, when the creation comes into existence, uh, first Akasha Tattva, Akasha Vayu, Vayu Agni, Agni, Apadva, Prithivi, all these five manifestations, five grades of consciousness, they are consciousness. The consciousness, absolute consciousness, Shuddha Chaitanya of the impersonal absolute, then comes the relative existence bound by the time and uh, space, appearing like a small speck in the ocean, like a small bubble in the endless ocean. A small bubble is coming up. That bubble is this vast universe in which we live. Millions of bubbles will raise in water. So many innumerable. But there is timeless, spaceless existence. There is no duality, no action in the absolute, impersonal absolute. And this universe, you know, when it forms, it forms by limiting the consciousness. Akasha Tattva comes, appears, then the, we, as if you are seeing the infinite through a vast window. So, vast window, much of the portion of the outside space is seen. When reduce the size of the window by one more window behind it, then the space appearing has reduced. From Akasha, when Vayu comes, 
prakriti is increasing, Chaitanya is decreasing, again decrease with the Agni Tattva, Jala Tattva and Prithvi Tattva. So the whole as if the infinity is becoming various levels of consciousness. In particular level of consciousness, the same universe looks in different ways. When you are in the Prithvi Tattva, universe looks different. Jala Tattva you see in a different level of consciousness. What is level of consciousness? In our experience you can understand we are entering into different states of existence every day. From waking to dream, dream to deep sleep and coming back. Jagrat, Swapna, Shushukti. Jagrat, Swapna, Shushukti. We are passing through the three states. What is difference between Waking and dreaming, you see, dreaming and deep sleep. Totally the world which you are seeing, including your bodily existence, relatives, friends, position, everything disappears. We, we are entering into a different state, different level of existence. Like that, there are the Akasha Tattva when you go uh, at Muladhara or in Swadhisthana, Manipura, at individual level. The so many consciousness, levels of consciousness. Each consciousness, so the same universe looks entirely different. So, you, consciousness expands to the absolute and each level, bliss is increasing from Muladhara onwards. Freedom is increasing, light is increasing, beauty is increasing, love is increasing, the divinity is expanding. So, this lay various levels, they are levels of consciousness. At the cosmic level, and the same thing happens at the individual level, microcosm and macrocosm. So, when each Akasha Tattva, why these five Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Apa, Prithvi is kept? Because we have only five senses. Five senses. The source of five senses and the object of five senses are these. From they come together, the sense object and sense, they come together. Where from the senses come? From the sense objects. Sense objects and senses have common base as the tattva. Tattva is what is conceived. Suppose you want to build a house. Now, Building a house, before building it, it is there in your mind as the an idea. Similarly, before the universe comes, it remains in the absolute. Oh, the universe is going to project out in this way. There, the five levels of consciousness, five levels of consciousness in the absolute, the undifferentiated from the absolute, it is still the absolute. The, House which you are going to build is still a mind in your mind. It's still a mind. And when it comes, gets erected, it has got taken a solid form. Now, like that, the absolute in which this universe, layers of universe, levels of consciousness are there in that absolute consciousness. They are called tattva. Tattva. Deadness, we saw earlier also, deadness. So, that is the absolute, this is the universe. Tat idam, idha sarvam khalvidam brahma, tat sat, that reality. So, deadness means, the tattva means the same thing still in the, before the creation, what was its state, tattva. So, when Prithvi, Akasha tattva comes first, Akasha, Tattva has Karnendriya and Shabda. Shabda, Shabda karme, Karnendriya. They appear with the Akasha Tattva. And the next uh, Vayu Tattva comes. Vayu Tattva comes with the Sparshendriya, Tvaka and Sparsha. With you, softness, hardness and all that. And from Vayu Tattva, when the next comes, the um, Tejas Tattva, the, the 
fire principle. When fire principles manifest, it manifests with the two more, the sight and eye. And from there, jala tattva, taste and tongue. Jala, the water force is, uh, water present is coming. Water tattva is manifesting. Water is tattva. Tattva, we are saying, it is already manifested tattva here. Tattva is manifested, but it's not grossified yet. With it, you see, these are separating. As it is coming, it is coming as if two, two leaves are coming with it. The stem is there and two leaves are coming. Now, that's why we see that in Bhagavad Gita, uh, how the, from the absolute, how the um, Vriksha, um, in the 15th chapter, Ashwatha, Ashwatha Menam Suvigruda Mula, the Ashwatha is supposed to be Urdhva Mula, other shaka, other shaka, it is expanding from the below. It is rooted in the absolute and is growing downward into the time and space. So you see the Akasha Tattva as Karnendriya and Shabda, Vayu, Sparsha and Sparsha, object of Sparsha and Sight and then the eye and then taste and tongue and prithvi tatta smell and earth. So this smell and fragrance, these are this is the whole universe with five and yeah, senses what you can see. And when these are over collectively from the sattvamsha we get the uh, Sattvamsha. Sattva Raja Tamas will be there. At knowledge, activity and matter. Knowledge part, we get the Buddhi and Manas. Mind is common to all senses. Buddhi is common to all senses. So Buddhi and Manas come out. From Raja Amsha, of the same five, Akashavayu, Agniya, Prithvi, the um, Sparsha in this uh, Pancha prana and karmendriya come out. Hands, feet, vak pani pada, vasta pai, vak also is karmendriya. They come out. And then from the tamas part, this material gets split into two and each half, the other four, one fourth, one fourth of the rest of the half, that is one eighth of the matter, get mixed up and we get this word Akasha which we see Prithvi which we see half of the Tattva is there half other are belonging to the other other um, Tattvas they get mixed so the whole universe is the combination of all this now Indriya the one object has become Indriya and Indriya Vastu Mm. Sense and sense object. Sense and sense object has the same source. And they have to join together and merge back in the infinite. When the pranaya takes place, all they get mixed up back. And how they divide it into many, get joined into one and become one. So Indriya and the Indriya Vastu, that is the sense and sense object, are two parts of the same reality. One is put in the Jiva, one is kept out in the world. So senses are in human, in uh, beings, and sense object is outside. They have attraction for each other, tremendous attraction. Eyes want to constantly see, ear wants to here, each sense organ, uh, Indriya. And Indriya doesn't end only with Karma Indriya. Vak, Pani, Pada, Upastha, Pai, are there. Karma Indriya. Ka Indriya will include Jnana Indriya, Karma Indriya, Buddhi, Manas. All they becomes 
Indriya. Mind is a part of the every Indriya. It is the master behind who receives. So whole thing becomes so much attached to the world because they belong to the same source and they are together. They want to merge. So Indriya Nigriya is where you conquer this attraction because you are splitting to two as if when you drop them you become what you are in reality we will see in the next class om shanti 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 hari om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanamastu